So this section is about creating a structure that you can use to repeat for each character, get a good starting point, and have something you can rely on and not worry about you know, where you need to go for files and uh, how things need to be assembled, so stuff like that. Uh, since you have all your baked maps, you know, normal, uh, object space normal, cavity, curvature, uh, material IDs, all those, uh, you can now use something like uh, Quixel's DDO to automate the creation of selection masks and base colors. So again with Tall John here, I loaded those masks, I um, loaded those um, baked maps in to DDO and it spits out you know, all these different selection masks of the different material ID colors, which is really, really helpful. And you can name those materials right there as you uh, you know, choose each base color in DDO. So you can see I have you know a good amount of base colors chosen already. There's still a few that uh, I need to do, I think, um, as an example here. But overall, they're all pretty much named, and most of the base colors are chosen. So it's a really helpful starting point and a really good start for all of your uh, selection masks as well. So just some more examples there of the masks. Hair, here's the shirt skin, his uh, trousers there. So DDO is really helpful for that. Uh, I'm not going to be going over how to use DDO, that's a whole, you know, how, how to do that's a, a separate part of the texturing process. Uh, but as far as just using that to get these, these structure points set up, it's really, really helpful. So once you have this, you can then use a texture template that uh, I had made that breaks down kind of the groups of you know parts of your of your texture here so you have your masks uh, spec power I'll explain that in a minute uh, your specular diffuse spec fake this is something that uh, uh, Eric Monari had tried and it was it was really helpful because of the uh, lack of specular control we have in our uh, game so this is basically faking uh, specular in addition to the spec that's actually exported as a map, um, and this spec is the spec fake is built into the diffuse. That's why it's green to match the green of the diffuse, which is helpful to colorize each of these folders to just give you a quick overview of you know what each part is meant for. So spec fake and then normals and then all your baked maps in there for light maps. So AO cavity curvature, your object space normal to use for uh, you know having top down lighting or side lighting if you need it and then your color IDs there. So once you have that, you know, those selection masks from DDO with the base colors, you can grab all of those and drop them right into the texture template in the color folder in here. So under diffuse I have lighting and color. I'm going to go over lighting in, in the next section, but for now you could drop all of these selection masks with the base color, just hold shift and drag onto the texture template and just put it in the color group there. And they're ready to go. Uh, this texture template can be found in that base folder you looked at in the beginning for the meshes and sculpts. So right in there is a texture folder and there's a 1024 texture template and a 512. It's the exact same folder structure and colors, just two different sizes to start out with. So that's about it. I find this really helpful. Um, Eric had also suggested doing this a while back. He had learned that from I think Electronic Arts and it's a really helpful way to you know kind of break down your your uh, texture into a useful structure that way. So once you have that started, you can then bring in your baked maps, and I usually keep them in this bakes folder here. So each one, you know, is just named properly. So I'll just drag, you know, each one in and one at a time. Again, hold shift, release. There's my normals. Make sure that's in there. Hide these. I've got my normal maps. Uh, let's see, AO. Put that. There, cavity.
curvature. Again, I'm holding shift every time. Object space normal. And color IDs. And you can also automate the uh, assembling of these maps into one file too. If you go to File, Scripts, and then Load Files into Stack, that'll let you add any of your open files and then just bring them into one document. So you can do that too and then bring them all into your texture template at the same time. Anything works like that. Manually dragging if you need to, or you can do the load files in the stack. It's usually what I do as a starting point as well. So you can now see I got you know AO, cavity, curvature, object space normal, and material IDs all right in the layered PSD file, which is a helpful starting point. And the last thing that's helpful as a starting point for your structure is to create save actions. So over here you can see I have uh, actions created for the diffuse, the spec, and the normal maps for Tall John. And they're just really, really simple. It just automates the uh, down resing to game, game res uh, asset size for the texture. So to create that, you just go, you know, create new action down here. And then the things I did were to shrink the image size to 512 constrain the proportions and make the interpolation bicubic sharper. If you're down resing that's helpful to do instead of just the regular uh, bicubic smooth gradients. And then save it as a targa with three channels, 24 bit depth and into the the game folder wherever it's supposed to go in Unity. And also record an undo to basically take it back to the you know pre uh, reduced image size 1024 and then I just save the PSD once. So every time I export the map to Unity, it also saves my PSD because it's saving the game map and also saving the PSD at the very end. So I know every time I export it, it's going to be saved. I'm not going to lose anything if something crashes. So uh, same thing for spec. There's not really any spec in here yet, but um, your spec is going to need to be a 128 res. Same thing by Cubic Sharper and also a Targa, but it should be a 32-bit depth because it will have the alpha channel to hold the spec power map. And that basically is just like, it's similar to a gloss map, but the way that the shaders work for characters in Unity for Lexica, it just basically is a way to uh, control more of the, the amplification of your, your spec map. Um, it's just a gray, grayscale map with solid colors. So, and then I just, undo that uh, image size. And I don't save it, don't save the PSD here when I save the spec map. Um, I just undo it and go back to the you know full res. And the last thing is to I, do, I have an action for your normal as well. Uh, also the image size to be 512 by cubic sharper. Also a targa map. Uh, three channels, 24 bit depth. And I just undo the image size and I don't resave the PSD in that action. So I just do that that resave of the PSD and the diffuse. The other two I, I don't. Um, you can if you want, it's up to you. Uh, you know, these are these are actions that are independent of uh, the actual color itself, but having those maps like the normal and the other baked light maps in here keeps all of your structure of your texture in one file instead of you know a bunch of random files in different spots. So that's about it for structure. We'll move on to uh, breaking down what's in the diffuse uh, part of the texture next.